ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a fantastic lunch break. I'm not going to say much right now because the lovely gentleman I'm about to introduce on stage is going to say quite a bit. Masai, we really enjoyed your performance this morning, so we're going to have another one. It's going to be some more poems from Masai. Here you go, mate. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I, will, I will start again by saying that uh, the past two days, uh, today included, has been very eye-opening, uh, especially from someone who's sort of just being introduced to the idea of Bitcoin. And it has always been a frightening thing to converse about because it includes something that um, we hold so dear or something that we're so afraid to lose. The moment you, someone talks about your money that you've worked hard for and telling you that you need to move it into this, the moment you talk about my money, already I curl up into myself because what do you mean I have to move this there? What do you mean I have to? It's a scary conversation to have, but what this conference has managed to do is that um, it softened the blow and it allowed for uh, the conversation to take place without the threat of losing anything. Because in any other context when you're speaking about Bitcoin or this type of stuff, it is almost, it is almost as though I must give it to you now. But this is not what I found, not the intention of this. This is just... Uh, carving out a new path, carving out new ways where this thing that we, we are talking about uh, could benefit. And I could leave today having not spent any of the money, except obviously the one that I bought to come here. Uh, but that has been fundamentally you know, eye-opening. And you guys have been doing an amazing job uh, today. I just, again, give yourself a round of applause. And there, I was speaking obviously outside as people do as we network about um, what, what, would, what it would mean for me uh, to be part of this community. And what I've really learned is that there is now um, an, an awareness of all this time I've been living in shame. And it's something that a lot of people have not sort of touched on is that the financial institutions that we sort of become accustomed to, they thrive in shame. They thrive in making you feel indebted to them. Uh, that for you to participate, for you to contribute, for you to be part of any uh, financial you know, growth, the first step or the first necessary step would be uh, debt. And before then, whatever you do, it's irrelevant for them. If I, am, if I am not indebted to anyone and I go anywhere, and then it's like, I would, I would like to buy a house, I'd like to buy a car, I'd like to get married. The first question is that, how much debt do you have? It's just almost that I must be part of an existing debt in order for me to be a functioning person. And what that creates is a sense of shame. And this conference proved that you don't have to live within that shame. It's not necessary for you to live with that shame. It's not necessary for you to be, to be owned by anyone else in order for you to be a functioning person. And that has been quite fundamental for me to just discover. Not just the fear of debt, but also the shame of not being able to even to be in debt. It's a paradox somewhere there. Thank you so much. I, I'm not one of the speakers. I just wanted to share what, what you guys have managed to do to someone who is just got introduced to it. And I think it's very important because a lot of you guys already are sort of pervy to it. I did not know nothing. So I'm a proof that it works. What you guys are talking about is making sense and it's not just throwing uh, uh, jargon into the audience. It actually makes a lot of sense to someone who's just got introduced to it. Um, now the poetry. Um, Where I'm from, there is no beach to go to. 
just corrugated shelters resembling a shipwreck at the bay of a city. Great rivers of tar meander their way into the ocean where our parents go fishing with nothing but hope as bait to wrestle with loan sharks, only to return at shore, rest assured that tomorrow is another day to avoid drowning in debt. Today is Monday. In her fishing net for a handbag, my grandmother has caught Madame's hand-me-downs. And her weekend leftovers of mints and potatoes and cook sisters all packed in a stock margarine's caffeine because they don't care if their dinner is mixed with dessert, Marilyn. For the longest time, I understood the relationship between me and these great whites and have almost become immune to their bite. But not once I thought my people would try to drown me. When did we grow gills? When did we start preferring the ocean to land? My grandmother has never been seasick, but she's sick of the sea, for it has stolen her children. It has stolen Matomi. Where are you, Matomi? When last did you visit land, Matomi? They have made an octopus out of you. Where is your backbone, Matomi? Why are you hiding, Matomi? Your children can't speak to their grandmother. Why are they calling you mad, Matomi? You are lost at sea. You're not middle class. You are center ocean drowning in debt. Get out of your current situation. The tides have held you hostage. Where I'm from, we can sell lightning in a teacup. High gray shit. You may laugh at such skills. To bend elements at will. To be this intimate with nature. I know of a queen when she dances, clouds gather to watch. Rain is but a few moves away. We have made the skies our highway. We speak the language of fire. We can convince eyes to burn, to glow as though amber twist and turn. We dance with whirlwinds. Ancient occult symbols are carved into our skin. I've seen old men converse with trees, persuading them to give up secrets of herbs, the bitter nectar of forest fruits, hidden truth, common knowledge, ten superstitions. Our bodies are not limited to this form. We transform into beasts as we perform, chanting in a uniform, uniform sin. You've abandoned anything. Confused, but we are still connected, correct, still drinking from sacred waters, our cups runneth over. You confuse alchemy with necromancy. The only thing dark about our art is our skin. Thank you. Dude, that was sick. That was so sick. Well done, man. Another fantastic poem from Masai. Thank you so much. And yeah, boy. And there's one thing you're missing there, Masai. That process you're talking about, learning about Bitcoin, it's called orange pilling. And I think what we just saw there was a live demonstration of someone being orange pilled. So that was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay.